Via telephone, Wayne Clark as in delegate from the 99th. He is uh, on site in Las Vegas, Nevada. Good morning, uh, Delegate Clark. How are you? Good morning, everybody. <laughs> you sound less caffeinated than, than McGeehan sounded earlier this morning, man. I am not caffeinated yet. Uh, <laughs> we know. They do, not have, they do not have a coffee bar in, in my hotel room. So I was like, I'm not going to walk all the way down. I'm on the 63rd floor or whatever. I'm not going to go all the way down to the casino floor to get a coffee and come back. So, no, I'm not caffeinated yet. I will be soon. <laughs> Um, I, I think if my uh, my today in history is correct, I believe Nevada, this date, 1864, became the 36th state in the Union. Do they have a big Nevada Day celebration for today out there? With all the lights that are out here, I'm, I have no clue. Every day is uh, a celebration. First, yeah, this is my first time out here in Vegas, so um, I couldn't tell you if it was. I mean, there's so many lights and everything in, in in your ear and face, and it's crazy. Where are you staying? Uh, the Luxor. Oh wow, that's that's yeah. the one with the with the gajillion candle power light that shoots straight up. You can see it from space. space. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. So, yeah. d have the locals been pronouncing it Nevada or Nevada, <laughs> Wayne? Um, I couldn't even tell you. I mean, they just say, welcome to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> See, they don't, they don't like conflicts either. They just <laughs> no. skip right by it. Uh, you are out there because West Virginia has a tourism booth at the SEMA yes. show, Specialty Equipment Marketing Association. Tell me about this. All right. So uh, every year, I mean, it's a huge, huge uh, uh, um, uh, convention with uh, individuals. Um, they got over 10,000 members, um, all different kinds of car uh, parts, uh, his, historic cars, restoration cars. Um, really cool, really neat. Uh, you know, if you're into cars and things like that, um, you know, out here with the West Virginia Department of Tourism, uh, we have a great booth um, in the uh, north wing uh, of the convention center. The convention center has like five different wings. It's, it's absolutely amazing. But, uh, you know, trying to, you know, promote tourism for the state of West Virginia. Uh, we had a great meeting yesterday with a uh, potential company who's looking to um, come into the state of West Virginia as a uh, distributor. They're looking for a 700,000 square foot facility. Um, so really good meeting with them yesterday. 700,000 square feet? Yes. Wow. Uh, they're a pretty big manufacturing company they're looking at um, potentially 3,000 to 4,000 jobs. Um, in the uh, kind of uh, looking at potentially Mineral County, somewhere in the eastern Panhandle, something that's close to railway and the uh, the, the Port of Baltimore. So uh, how many other West Virginia representatives are out there with you, Wayne? Oh, it's myself, Gary Howell, um, Kathy S. Krauss, uh, Lori Dittman, uh, uh, Patrick Lucas, Rick Hillebrand, um, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a good uh, list. Patch Atkins, yeah, and Senator Maynard. So a good crowd. Okay, very good. John Gilstrap. So the purpose of the Small Equipment Manufacturing Association and a West Virginia booth, I I think it's specialty, John. Specialty equipment. Yes. Why that show? I mean, it, it, is that a direct connect? I'm, I'm not. I'm not seeing how why that would be the place we would be set up. Not critical of it, I just don't understand the link. Well, one of the things that's important about these, these folks, most of, most of these companies are small um, mom and pop uh, type of companies, but uh, a lot of them are from some of the states that are uh, maybe a little more difficult to do business in. So um, looking at potentially uh, wooing them over and making them think of moving their, their business and operations over the state of West Virginia. But the other thing is, is that you know, West Virginia has a lot of um, like uh, uh, mountain races and things like that, where, where especially down in the southern part, um, where people will bring their cars and do these races up mountains, and um, it's a great opportunity for to promote uh, some of the things we have uh, with our our, our 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 state parks, our national park, um, and these types of uh, races that we have going on um, throughout the entire summer. 
And the majority of the people that are out here, they, you know, they do have residual money. They travel. They do things like that. So it, it kind of has a, a, a decent connection there. Matt Miller. I want to know if you've run into folks out there uh, as you talk about all the different cars and, and so forth, uh, historic and, and otherwise, uh, is there familiarity with West Virginia and the old Norwalk car that was made right here in our eastern panhandle back in the early 1900s? Um, and does even the fact that there's a Toyota plant in our area, uh, does that make, or not in our area, I should say in our state, I know it's in the southern part of the state, uh, but but does that help to attract some attention as well? You know, that, that's a good question in regards to the normal car. I'm not a very big car uh, enthusiast, so uh, I don't know a whole lot about, about that specifically. Um, but... Uh, you know, we are getting, you know, folks that are like, oh, that's really neat about West Virginia and some of the things that we have. So, you know, it, it's nice. Is there a particular stereotype of West Virginia that you've run into at this <laughs> point that you have to try to overcome? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, Gary Howe and I, Gary doesn't fly. So we, 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 we drove um, three days driving across country and, uh, you know, obviously there there's this stereotype throughout the country that, you know, West Virginia is a relatively poor state, you know, and that we don't have very much, you know, things. But when, you, you know, for, for, for people maybe to go and come and visit, but when you start talking to them, you know, when you start showing them, you know, some of the benefits that the state has, the fact that we are within a truck driver one day trip to half the population of the United States and 30% of the population of, of Canada, it kind of opens up their eyes. They're like, wow. And we have a, a really good highway system through the state, you know, um, that can get uh, uh, manufacturer companies and, and they get their product um, to other parts of the, uh, of the East Coast. I know that there have been some some deals and things that have been made. I think of Form Energy and so forth. Are are there ever conversations like what the state can do to help draw businesses like these that are at this convention to West Virginia, or those are types of negotiations that come later? You're basically just giving them, you know, what West Virginia can provide as far as you know the the great employees, the great people of West Virginia, the great scenery, and all the other things. Yeah, so Secretary Michael Carmichael was at the uh, meeting yesterday, you know, and, and the negotiation parts and all that stuff, that's, that's his job. You know, our job is to, you know, maybe find the business, find the company that may be looking, you know, uh, get them introduced to Secretary Carmichael, let him, you know, kind of take care of the MOUs and all the other stuff and, you know, the back door, you know, back office stuff that has to be done. That's But that's more of his focus. But one of the great things, you know, listening to his presentation uh, yesterday was, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, the, the company that's coming in is providing jobs, um, is going to hire local, and is going to provide private health care uh, to their um, their employees because um, the private health care helps us because we're so state-driven with PEIA, you know, that it helps to lower the cost overall um, because the private health care, you know, the hospitals helps them out. And so it helps to lower the cost throughout the state. So it was really good listening to him, you know, uh, talk about that and, and why that was important. And in fact, the, the company that we were, we were talking with asked and said, you keep talking about offering private health care. And why is that important to you? And, you know, Mitch's answer, you know, just like I said, was it helps to drive down the cost uh, of health care throughout the state. So really good hearing that kind of stuff and, uh, in, um, and how he negotiates through these uh, these deals. So in the secretary's presentation, who was in the audience? Uh, we were in a conference room with the uh, the, the, the delegates, um, Senator Maynard, uh, Mitch Carmichael, um, and the, the business that we were touring yesterday. So is there an opportunity while you're there, is there a breakout session where you or someone from the West Virginia delegation can stand up and address a lot of folks in a proactive way, or is it you you wait till people come to the booth and you make individual pitches? Well, we're, we're, we're having people come to the booth, but we're also 
uh, each of each of the delegates and the senator have you know a list of of businesses that were were making their way around you know the convention floor talking to folks um, individually. Um, you know, we, we don't have any large presentation that is set up, um, you know, but we're doing little, you know, cold calls, I, I guess you could say, uh, to each of the businesses. And are there a lot of states with, that are represented there with, with booths? I haven't seen many, you know. So, um, you know, Nevada has a, a, a booth, um, you know, but there most everything is all some sort of auto manufacturer. So we're, we're one of the few that are there. Delegate Wayne Clark, our guest here on the program. He is in Las Vegas for the SEMA show, along with a contingent from the West Virginia legislature and related offices. He is the vice chair of economic development and tourism and also is on the uh, workforce development committee. So if you think about this, the more businesses you recruit to the state, the more you need a workforce. Uh, Wayne, do uh, we know the status of the West Virginia workforce as the, the latest checkup? Do we have enough able-bodied people to uh, be employed at these uh, businesses that are moving into the state? Um, we do. And one of the great things that, you know, the selling points that we have, uh, especially for this company we talked to yesterday, was we will train their employees through our local CTEs. Um, we, will, we will buy the equipment that they need to be trained on um, and train the employees for them uh, while they're going, you know, while they're going through their development stage. So when they're ready to start um, actually producing product, everybody knows what their job is and, and goes right on uh, and gets things done. So it's really cool about our, our CTEs that we've done over the last few years um, through the education department. Do you have to monitor what that situation and what that population is like as you work on recruiting companies to the state? We have to monitor. In other population. words, we're recruiting companies to the state. Do we still have enough people to work at these places? Like in the Eastern Panhandle, obviously, new companies are moving in all the time. Right. Uh, and, and we have a pretty low unemployment rate here in the Eastern Panhandle. Correct. So, you know, obviously, they're choosing areas and we're presenting areas um, where where their employees would be. You know, uh, this company, as an, as an example, has, you know, engineers, um, you know, that they need, that, that they're um, interested in hiring, along with, you know, just re regular, um, you know, factory line workers, uh, things like that. So they have a big mix. So when we're talking about where the potential is uh, for their facility, we, we already know that, that the folks that are there um, can, can ac actually uh, – um, fill the company's needs. So uh, you, when's the next interim session coming up, Wayne? Uh, it will be in two weeks in uh, Wheeling at Ogilvy. Oh, okay, very nice. So maybe you'll see the Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, what, what do you plan on uh, addressing during that interim session, uh, specifically with any of your committees? So uh, economic development, we've gone through a majority of all of our our agenda that's getting us uh, set for the uh, upcoming uh, uh, session already. Um, I have not sat down with Gary to see Delegate Gary Howell, our chairman, of what we have on the committee for Ogilvy, but uh, we have quite a few, um, you know, tax incentive programs that we're going to be introducing, um, where um, companies who are who, who are paying a federal excess tax. Um, you know, there's uh, when when you make a uh, like a a large scale tire, there's a federal excess tax uh, that they have to pay uh, to the federal government. Well, we're developing programs that will give them a state deduction for the exact amount they're paying to the federal. So it kind of helps them to move to West Virginia because, you know, even though they're paying that federal excise tax, we're giving them that state deduction that offsets that. So we have some some legislation that's uh, in that uh, area, along with, you know, I've been working with uh, for, on, a, on a farm winery bill uh, for quite a few months now um, that we'll be introducing. Um, and uh, we're working on a, a, a little small change in the CODA, which is the public outdoor uh, designated area. It's the, the new um, where where certain main streets can create an area where 
where people could maybe go from one restaurant to the other while carrying a beverage from one to the other. Mm -hmm. Uh, When they have a fair or a festival, uh, there's a dual license issue that we didn't see in the original bill that we got to make a little tweak to on this bill. So those are some of the things that we've already finished um, and we're kind of getting ready for everything to hit in January. What what needs to be tweaked in the West Virginia law regarding wineries and uh, from a tourism standpoint? Uh, I'll give you an example. My my wife recently had a bunch of high school friends that came down to Harper's Ferry, and then they uh, all had their little reunion. They went on a big winery tour, but they were almost all exclusively in Virginia because of the restrictions in West Virginia. What needs to change about that to make the West Virginia wineries as consumer-friendly as the Virginia ones? Well, that's exactly what the Farm Winery Bill does. Um, and basically what we did is we took everything from Virginia and we moved it over that fit within our state constitution and our codes so that so that our wineries can do the exact same things, can do, you know, the samples of, you know, they can do a flight sample. Uh, they can buy a bottle and they can sit on the property and they can, you know, have, you know, a charcuterie board and, and, and drink and enjoy the property, listen to music, things like that. Um, currently right now, one of the hard parts is, is that you can do a sample. Uh, and then when you want, oh, I really like that bottle. Okay. You can have that bottle and see you later. You can go home. You can't drink it on the property. So we're giving the farm wineries that ability to actually compete with uh, Virginia. I always said we have the same climate. We have the same terrain. We have everything the same as Virginia. Why are we not capitalizing on that revenue and having that as an option with our tourism? And now we're going to, you know, providing we get this bill across the finish line, you know, we will compete with Virginia in that process. Do you expect that to breeze through or do you think there's going to be pushback? Well, I mean, you're always going to have pushback. I mean, any kind of any time we have a ABCA bill, uh, we know that we have about you know 25, 30 that are going to vote against it. You know, but uh, since coming into the legislature in in 21, starting with you know uh, one of my bigger speeches that I've done on the floor, House Bill 2025, you know, every one of our ABCA bills have have made it through the finish line. Do we have a lot of wineries in the state of West Virginia? We don't. We don't. Uh, we're at like 30 throughout the whole state. Mm. So this would present an opportunity for more in that industry to develop? Correct. Okay. We're in, I think, like a golden age of wineries right now. In states that have friendly laws toward them, they're popping up everywhere. It's amazing how many people are chucking the 9 to 5 and growing their own grapes and starting wineries. And you can build quite a little uh, business around the winery itself. Uh, with a lot, of, there's a lot of different options out there when you visit these places too. It's it's really you can make for quite a day. Do the same laws apply to breweries? The breweries have a different different types of laws, and we we, we kind of addressed that back in in House Bill 2025. Um, took care of them in regards to you know the growler sales and all the other things that. Uh, uh, buying to go, um, you know, with a, uh, you know, buying a six pack of their craft beer to go or a growler. We did all that stuff in that bill. Wayne, final thoughts are yours. We're just about out of time. Well, I mean, it's exciting to be out here in Vegas. Um, you know, exciting to talk to uh, potential businesses that, that come into the state of West Virginia. Um, you know, excited about uh, this upcoming session. I think we're going to get a lot of great things done uh, for the state and, uh, you know, uh, looking forward to, you know, a fun, uh, relaxing, um, uh, uh, weaning uh, election cycle coming up in uh, primary of uh, 24 and uh, general 24 and uh, continue to serve for the uh, folks of the 99th district. Thank you, Wayne. Good to talk with you. Thank you, guys. Delegate Wayne Clark.